Welcome back Retro Gang. Earlier this week Nvidia unveiled the highly anticipated RTX 30 series cards and with it came a brand new Cyberpunk 2077 trailer showcasing the real time ray tracing and its effects in game. Even though this trailer was only 38 seconds of actual in game footage, there's quite a bit packed into it. If you like this type of content make sure to hit that like button for the Y tag. Alright you ready? Strap in boys, let's ride. The opening scene is a familiar one, seen all the way back in the 2018 E3 trailer as well as the recent Geek trailer. It overlooks the most dense part of Japantown as well as the city center. On the bridges connecting Watson to Westbrook are roadblocks that would be used to stop players from entering places due to story elements. Instead of just putting up an invisible wall, CDPR has stated that they'd rather have every aspect of the game tied to its world. Another example would be a door that you can't enter not just being locked but would also have a bouncer that's giving you a reason as to why you cannot enter. In the skies are quite a few AVs. These three have red and blue lights which may mean they're NCPD or another public city service. There's also a ton of ads on these buildings. At 7 seconds in is our first look at Little China at night. This is directly in front of V's mega apartment building that we saw back in the 2018 48 minute gameplay trailer. CDPR stated that there will be differences in crowd density and activity in the day versus the night as we can see here. There's an NCPD station close by, most likely to keep the peace within the huge population of the surrounding mega buildings. Back in 2018 the sign above this underground walkway said Sector 027 but is now changed to Mark X24 which was also seen on this building back in 2018. We have almost no information on what exactly Mark X24 is or what its significance is here. There's also an unknown model Chevalon passing by. The next scene is in the El Coyote Coho with presumably members of the Valentino's gang. On the table is two types of malt liquor or beer. Brosif we saw back in the Life Paths trailer and an unknown brand that ends with the word Felice. The latter brand has been around for quite a while as we saw it in Johnny's flashback during the Night City Wire music trailer that took place sometime between 2010 and 2020. It's also been stated that the alcoholic drinks in Night City will get Get you drunk, while sodas and the like will give you a health or stamina regen. The lady closest to the camera has a cool looking holster that's holding dual automatic pistols, but I only figured that out after staring at them for almost 10 minutes, only to realize that her left arm is wrapped around her body and is clipping through her gun. CDPR has also confirmed that there will be no dual wielding for the players in game. Moving on, our next scene is outside the afterlife. It shares buildings with what looks like an escort service or after hours nightclub that's open 24 hours, with this highly suggestive sign on the wall. Next we move to the Lizzie's bar main floor. We get a wider view this time that shows us this huge moxie gang mural on the wall. Then the entrance to the afterlife that we move into in the next scene. The bartender Claire is still on duty while Jackie hangs out all by himself with no sign of V anywhere. Directly in front of us is that chromed out chick with the wicked body that was seen during the Life Paths trailer. After a quick scene of Padre and his driver, we move to Corporal V in his AV that's about to land and ruin those guys game on the rooftop basketball court of the Lizzie's bar. This time it shows us just enough to allow us to pinpoint the location of the bar. As we know, the large vertical ad as well as the Kiroshi Optics and Kendashi signs are just at the waterfront of Japantown when viewing from Watson. So the Lizzie's bar is in a great location, being near the high earning citizens in Westbrook, the economic hub of the city center, as well as the consumer's middle class patrons in Watson. At 18 seconds in, the Serata Tech shotgun obliterates these two maelstromers. V shoots through cover and through the ganger behind it to finally hit an explosive device behind them. Before shooting, the Serata had one shot available, which means this shotgun can shoot each barrel independently. This is demonstrated just a few scenes later. For comparison, here's the Serata shotgun shooting both cartridges from the Tools of Destruction trailer. In the next scene, I would like to correct a mistake I made in my Tools of Destruction trailer analysis. The gun V is currently using is the Genesis Assault Rifle. However, it has two variants, one power weapon and one smart weapon. In this scene from the Tools of Destruction trailer, V is using the smart version of the Genesis Assault Rifle, not the DN as I had stated. I'd overlooked that possibility because the weapon when first introduced was of course a power weapon. Here it is in the 25 minutes of gameplay we got during Night City Wire episode 1. Johnny is also here in the background helping V take down these maelstromers. Then the scene continues as we get our first look at another vehicle made by Villafort. Next is that same scene of the Serata shotgun. As you can see, V doesn't charge a shot even halfway before letting go of the trigger, allowing him to fire one shot at a time. In the corner is an individual that at first glance would seem like another ganger. However, I think this guy is actually another first look, this time of a companion or quest giver other than Jackie along for the ride. His body language shows no aggression toward V at all, but he is looking toward the same enemy that V is, whilst reloading or getting ready to fire the same model Serata shotgun that V is currently wielding. This guy is a companion, I'm calling it right now. 
At 21 seconds in, we're in V's boss battle against the Maelstrom leader, Royce. This time, V is using the Constitutional Arms Defender. It obviously has a glowing barrel that you may have thought was a flame or heating augmentation, which is viable because it has been shown that clothes and armor will have various bonuses, including thermal resistance. But CDPR added this simply to give visual feedback that the gun is overheating. Let's also do a comparison because this scene looks so much better than before. The next few scenes show off the dynamic reflections enabled with Ray Tracing 2.0, with this one being Senior Quest designer Philip Weber's favorite spot in Night City. Of course, I couldn't help but ask him exactly where it was. Charter Hill is a residential subdistrict within the wealthiest district of Night City, Westbrook. On the wall are some old ads along with this new one by Encart. Most of what it says is blocked by the pillar, but you can clearly see the word Chicago at the end. Chicago is mentioned quite a few times within the source books, especially Neo Tribes, which details its challenges during the collapse of the United States, then the devastating man-made bioplague of 2012. Chicago is also one of the major trading points for nomads and their caravans. This could just be a meaningless ad, but CD Projekt Red are famous for teasing their expansions, so we may just see more of Chicago in the future. After is one more scene that may be in the north side industrial district that shows these amazing reflections. As the trailer states, these next few scenes will show off diffused illuminations. We're in the El Curdy Coho again. Pepe is behind the bar entertaining the small crowd. The good news is that you can join in at only 18 years old. Night City is a free state, so it makes sense that they would change the legal drinking age. On the floor is a cross and rosa style mural that looks very similar to Padre's business card. While crosses and roses aren't uncommon to Valentinos, this exact style is only seen in these two instances. Padre is described as a high level fixer, as well as a high ranking individual within the Valentinos gang, so I'd speculate that he may have some kind of ownership or investment in the El Coyote Coho. At 28 seconds in is Misty at the front counter of her shop, Misty's Esoterica, located just a few blocks from V's mega building in Little China. The services she offers are chakra harmonization for about 15 eddies per hour and crystal radiation for the low price of 11 eddies, glitch free. She has something special as well for a whopping 25 euro bucks that you can see a bit better in this screen. Misty also doubles as a receptionist for the Ripper Doc Victor Vector. In the background is a miniature of an unknown deity who may be the Hindu god Vishnu. This full size version stands somewhere in Little China. We're in the afterlife again in the next scene, where I spent a few minutes just admiring the diversity in the clothing and identity of these characters. They are in very atypical poses for a video game, looking very natural and lifelike within the setting. With that said, I will be spending a significant amount of time in the character creator getting my V just how I want him. The next scene is a fairly uninteresting shot of a hallway in the Lizzie's bar. Then we move towards scenes that will show off ray trace shadows and ambient occlusion. This shot was analyzed by Reddit user Mamitsu, who found that it could only be this roundabout here, between Japantown and North Oak, where hills meet a dense area of the city. I'd be inclined to agree with him. At 33 seconds in is almost definitely my favorite shot of the entire trailer. These incredible bots were manufactured by Kang Tao and they seem to be contracted by Night City Police Department. I doubt the NCPD owns them as they have no form of weapon within their chassis or externally. They also have no armor or defense to minimize the amount of damage taken. As a matter of fact, their design strikes me as very portable oriented, looking as if they could be deactivated, transported, and redeployed in a short amount of time. Furthermore, they are still painted in the Kang Tao blue and orange brand colors, which leads me to believe they are simply observation bots, as the only piece of equipment installed is a single optical unit within their heads. The next scene shows the third person rear view angle while driving. There's no tints on this quadro type R so you can see V clearly as he's driving down the road of an expensive looking area. Moving on, this NCPD beat cop is engaged in a shootout with a scav ganger. He's using a FAMAS style power weapon that may be his personal weapon as most government issued firearms rarely come with blue and orange camouflage skins. The final scenes are V's chase scene with the Arasaka agents in the biotechnica fields, then the scavengers crashing on the streets of Kabuki. Thanks so much for watching guys, don't forget to head over to Twitter to join my almost 200 subscriber giveaway. If you enjoyed, remember to leave a like for the Y tag and consider subscribing for more Cyberpunk 2077 content.